I've always called myself a Jesus-loving blues man because for me, uh, to be human is to try to muster the courage to love one's way through the coldness and the cruelty and the darkness of the world. It is in one sense the most absurd way of being in the world because it makes no sense to the world. At the same time, it is the most desirable way of being in the world for me because I find joy in loving my way through the darkness of the world that I would never experience if I didn't opt for living that kind of Christ-centered uh, life. So in that sense, that first century Palestinian Jew named Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I bank my all on the promise that he actually put forward. At the same time, I'm a blues man because I am much more caught between Good Friday and Easter, especially that Saturday in between where God is dead, where things are not just crisis ridding but catastrophic, calamitous, uh, uh, disastrous. And the blues man or woman tries to somehow sustain a smile in the face of that kind of darkness. So that Easter comes, but Easter is, as C.S. Lewis put it, a surprise by joy. It's not expected. It's not routinized. It's not something that you take for granted. It is the greatest gift. It's the impossible possibility that is enacted in your life as you live your life between that Good Friday, the day Jesus was crucified, and uh, through that dark Saturday. Uh, and in that way, for me, I've been, you know, one of the most blessed of persons because uh, the love that I experienced growing up, Shiloh Baptist Church, mom, Irene West, Clifton West, my brother Clifton West, sister Cynthia and Cheryl, uh, have been a springboard, a launching pad that has taught me the deepest lessons about life, which have to do with the depths of love, radically against the grain of the world, but at the same time a uh, love that uh, you can't, I can't conceive myself uh, without, certainly I can't conceive myself uh, preserving sanity, dignity, integrity without that love being at the center of it. It's for me, my spiritual life is inseparable from my political life because to follow Jesus means to live in the world but not be of the world. Uh, we all are in some sense of the world because we speak a language, we have a skin, we have a family, we're part of a community. But we know that that, that, that that city of God that impinges, that kingdom that intervenes in time and space cuts so radically against the grain that to take seriously the humanity of the least of these, of the orphan, the widow, the fatherless, the motherless, the poor, the working peoples, the, uh, those who are rebuked and scorned, those who are spit on, those who are devalued and disrespected and, uh, uh, and degraded, that they ought to be at the very center of our conception of ourselves. When the old folk used to say justice is what love looks like in public, it's really just a matter of one's Christian witness, of accenting the plight of those on the margins. Why? Because you love them. Poor people are people to be loved. When you love persons, you can't stand the fact they're being treated unjustly. When you love anybody, you can't stand the fact that they're being treated unfairly. And so for me to follow Jesus is, in fact, to love poor people, working people. It's also to love rich brothers and sisters, too. You don't want them to be treated unjustly and unfairly, either. It's just that to be very rich and very wealthy and very smart and very privileged tends to uh, uh, tilt one more easily to forms of idolatry, the idols of the world because they seem to be so satisfying at the moment.
rather than to actually allow one to open one's heart and one's soul to experience those deep, enduring joys, not just the fleeting pleasures of the world. Uh, uh, so that the love ought to be an all-embracing love. 